even a gambling guy, and this is my favorite episode of the year. This is the individual awards preview where we hand out a favorite and a long shot for AL MVP, NL MVP, AL and NL Cy Young, AL and NL Rookie of the Year. None of us were going to miss this one. You got all three for the third time this week. Happy opening day, Eve. Everybody's favorite word is penultimate. So this is the penultimate day before uh, opening day, right? Or actually, Autumn no, one. that would have been yesterday. I fucked that up. Can we start over? <laughs> yeah. Baseball show, Jack, Peter, Aram. Uh, are you guys really excited for this episode? Yes, this is easily my favorite episode of the year. I love going through the odds, too, because, you know, we can find edges. You know, all we do is talk baseball all day long. And there are some prospects that we're really excited about that maybe are starting in AAA, so their odds are much lower, that are worth a long shot. Uh, the AL MVP discussion might end in a total of two minutes because of Shohei Otani, but every other race is really fascinating, and I love gambling, so I'm in. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, you I'm love uh, Yeah, I do. Um, I, I do. I, I, I'm just not responsible with it in terms of like getting good value and like I, when Peter sees me bet, I see him like shuddering. Like visceral, like he he holds it in, but I can sense it because he's my friend, and I can read his even his internal body language. He's like, "Why are you betting that? Why are you buying a half point?" Like, and, yeah. So and Aram, it's the classic thing too. It's like betting on sports and knowing sports are two completely different things. Oh, yeah. Like uh, we even spoke about it in our uh, our bracket on not gambling advice when we did the college basketball episode, like <laughs> knowing college basketball versus betting on college basketball is completely different. Same with baseball. So you can use your sports mind so much, find an answer. And that is, ends up being the trap because Vegas knows what you're thinking too. Yeah. Um, so it's about being strategic, finding value. And that's my favorite part of sports really finding well, value. Well, and Aram is is guilty of doing one thing that is like almost borderline illegal, and that's thinking that Peter's advice is actually gambling advice. It's a good point. Oh, I would I would never think such a thing. <laughs> I can't believe the people that think that it's gambling advice. Unreal. Hey, what do you guys what do you guys make of a hundred million dollar player Andres Jimenez now? <laughs> you see that? Oh yeah. my God! I I'm a huge fan of the punch me in the face bets. You guys know that. Beginning of last year. If you told me that Andres Jimenez was an $100 million player, I would have told you to punch me in the face. So I saw um, a really cool tweet by uh, Cleveland Stats on Twitter. It's a great account that I follow. They love shouting out Kyle Quantrill, so I follow. When you tweet about him, I follow you. Um, (laughs) And they said that baseball reference war, Andres Jimenez actually put up a 7.4, which was tied for the most amount of war ever by a Cleveland Guardians Indians second baseman which I thought was incredible because the Guardians have had a great franchise for a long time now with Hall of Fame level second baseman and Andres Men has tied that record. He's a really safe player because he's going to play elite defense, especially with the banning of the shift. And the guy put up, what, a 140 WRC plus, 40% better. Now he'll probably regress with the bat slightly, but even if he's an above average bat at that value, that's still worth it. Yeah, it's it's definitely a great deal. Like I, I totally agree. I'm just surprised that he got that much given how many more years of control he still had given the profile like you mentioned it's a glove guy and we saw nico horner just get 35 million dollars right they bought years over three years but it was just to buy kind of one year Mm. uh, one more year of control but like horner's kind of cut from a similar cloth i mean i I, jimenez impacts the baseball more but it's just amazing to see jimenez break that that nine figure deal which is pretty awesome and i don't think the guardians are going to regret it of course and what we were talking about in the past right we said I think the Guardians are going to spend some more money. They secured some investment. Uh, yep. They gave up some equity, secured investment, and now we're seeing them reinvest into the team. This is great news for Cleveland fans because this shows uh, kind of a changing of the tides from what we've seen from Guardians baseball going back to Indians baseball as well. And I think they're going to be really smart about who they give this money to. I, I credit the Guardians for that because historically they have been good year by year. How do you be good year by year? You draft well, you sign well internationally, and you develop well. That can also translate to handing out big money contracts. I don't think they hand out a big money contract to a pitcher right now because the the two candidates on their rotation or in their rotation right now, apologies to Cal Quantrill, I'm sorry, Peter, but Shane Bieber had a shoulder thing last year, two years ago, and Tristan McKenzie already on the IL, and he's done it for one year. He had a sub three ERA last year. So 
I think and they do a really he's on he's on the IL for eight weeks. Right shoulder strain does not look good. It, it flared up in spring training. He was asked to come out. Now he's out for probably until what the end of May. Probably. Yeah, they're going to be careful with McKenzie. He, he's had a history going all the way back to the minor leagues uh, of having some arm issues uh, that weren't just like Tommy John or or very cut and dry stuff. It's kind of like weird shoulder like kind of all over types of things that I think they're going to be extremely precautionary, which is super unfortunate because it seemed like he was in the midst of that, like following up that breakout after what he did in the second half last year. For sure. And, and the whole point is the guardians I think are going to make smart investments. And this feels like an elevated version of the Cabrian Hayes deal with Pittsburgh, where, you know, you're going to get baseline value here with the glove. And if he's a one Oh five WRC plus guy, this is worth it. Three years of arbitration, three years of free agency for a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Sign me up for that. Yeah. hundred percent. And I'm like, let's say he drops to a five war player, which would be a significant drop from last <laughs> let's year. Say That's he drops still to incredible. four. No, oh, exactly. no. No, I'm saying even a 2.4 difference in war would be that's a down year from his previous year. And even a five war player is well worth that contract. So I love the deal for Cleveland. I'm just excited for them this season, even with Tristan McKenzie spending the first eight weeks on the uh, IL. I mean, dude, you could argue that it's worth it for a four win player year yeah. by year. Right. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I think yeah. that Jimenez is, is almost guaranteed three. And if the bat is average, then he's four. Yeah. Manny Machado and Andres Jimenez had a similar war. Andres Jimenez is younger, and Manny Machado just signed a $350 million extension. Not saying that Andres Jimenez is the player of Manny Machado, but when it's a $250 million difference, I know you're bypassing arbitration there. Like, you can't be mad at the deal. No, no. not one bit. All right, awards? Awards, let's fucking do it. Do we start with the most boring one, AL MVP? It is boring. Uh, Mr. And he's fast too. Shohei yep. Otani is <laughs> plus 200. Uh, after that, it thins out quickly. Aaron Judge plus 500. Mike Trout plus 650. Julio plus 800. And the first guy in the 1000s is Jordan Alvarez plus 1100. Peter, where are you going? First, I want to kind of unveil uh, the curtain here and go through our group chat because I thought it was hilarious. Um, Jack McMullen texts, uh-oh, someone let me cook. And I said, Otani MVP with two chef hats. And he said, you're a hater. And I said, you're cooking ramen noodles. Yeah. And he said, you're not wrong, though. He hits and pitches. And I said, and he's fast. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, so you like Otani, I assume? Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to like Otani, the guy pitches and hits, and he's also pretty fast. Um, I think that one of the incredible develop developments of Shohei Otani is on the mount. Um, he's not expected to go 200 innings this year, but he could realistically win the Cy Young. Last year, his fastball opponents hit 281 against it, even though it was averaging 97 miles an hour. So he started throwing a 97 mile an hour sinker where opponents hit 167 against it. Opponents can hit it splitter, can hit the sweeper. He's just turning into the greatest player that we've ever seen. And a bet on someone else you're basically hoping they put up a historic season like Aaron Judge did. And when you look at the field, there's only a few players who can put up historic seasons, but you can never actually bet on Otani's odds because they aren't even close to worth it. And they know it's not close to worth it. So it makes betting on the MVP in the American league basically undoable, but we can have fun and we can pick our own, you know, for the exercise. For sure. Yeah. And we are going to throw out long shots, but Aram, I, I assume Otani is like your clear cut. If you were to bet on a guy with odds shorter than a thousand, it's him. Um, yeah. Although might I point you to the longest odds you may ever see for Mike Trout at plus 650. That's, that's my, that's going to be my pick, but also really interesting. Um, yeah, you know, like kind of alternative bet that that BetMGM has here. Yes, that I that caught my eye. It really did, and it, this is smart by them because I mean, for the exact reasons that Peter just laid out. And if you go to like BetMGM below the MVP odds, they have AL MVP Shohei or Ota Shohei Otani or Mike Trout versus the field. So basically, saying if Trout or Otani win it, that that's one side of the bet. Everybody else in the American League is the other side of the bet. Shohei and Trout is plus 115, meaning 100 to win 115. The field is minus 150, which is 150 to win 100. 
I kind of love the the Shohei Trout combination at plus money there. I mean, I, a healthy season of Mike Trout feels like a slam dunk MVP if it weren't for Shohei, which it seems like a healthy season to Shohei is a slam dunk MVP. So you got two guys basically there that if they're healthy would win it probably. I had that exact special on my notes page, like set to ask you guys. I think that Otani or Trout plus 115 on BetMGM is a better bet than Otani plus 200. Can I give you guys the one bet below 20 to one odds that I think if you are going to bet, this is a decent play. Um, you just Vladimir... have no thoughts on that versus the field. Well, no, no, I, I have thoughts on that. I mean, it's, you know, with trout, you know, you have more of the injury concerns there. What, what is the line again? Plus one fifteen, Otani or trout. It's not a good bet. How? So, it's so here's the value. Thing. It's like, it's basically like they're giving you a pick. Um, Otani's plus 200, and now you're getting Otani and Trout at plus 115. Yeah, I think if anybody's going to beat Otani for the MVP, it's Trout. I guess the, the reason I brought it up is someone who I'd bet over Trout, um, and that's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He was very close to winning the MVP in 2021. Pitchers adjusted to him last year, started throwing much more breaking balls, but an arm knows this when ranking prospects. Like He was given a true 80-grade hit tool. He's one of those hitters like Jordan Alvarez, like Aaron Judge, who can put up historic seasons like that. We saw him almost win the Triple Crown in 2021. I think this is the year he kind of adjusts back to pitchers adjusting to him, and he could go off. So I'm looking at like Jordan, I'm looking at Aaron Judge again, I'm looking at Mike Trout. And of all of those guys... Vladdy has the highest odds. So he's a guy who I think is worthy of a sprinkle when you also consider he's on a Blue Jays team that we expect to maybe not win the division, but make the playoffs. And I know a couple of you guys think the Blue Jays will win the division. I think it's a good bet. So he could be that guy who hits 48 to 55 home runs, hits 320, and maybe Otani does what he does. But if Vladdy wins the triple crown or something. He has that in his bag. So I'm looking at 12 to one with Vladdy being a pretty solid bet, but like, I would rather take that than Otani and trout. Right. Sure. Cause when betting on an MVP, you have two guys who potentially could get injured and then it lowers the odds of plus plus one fifteen. I just, I could never bet on that. I get it. I get it. Do you have a long shot in mind? Um, my long shot was um, Adley Rutschman at 25 to one. Um, I just think he could make an incredible impact and be among the war leaders. And if Baltimore somehow sneaks into the playoffs, I think it's going to be on the back of Adley. Um, again, wouldn't bet it. I wish the odds were more, but he was a guy who I was looking at for MVP because he could turn in like some sort of Joe Maurer type season, a Buster sure. Posey type season. And they've won the MVP before too. So I was thinking about him as as more of a long shot. Fair. Aram, who's your long shot? My long shot is is actually Alex Bregman. Um, you know, this was last year was the first year that we saw Alex Bregman look like the previous version of him, which was back to back eight war seasons. We saw some of the the MVP finalists last year, right around seven, mid sevens war. If you have an eight war or anything close to it, you're going to be in the conversation. And when I'm looking for value here, like. 40 to one odds on Bregman for a guy that's capable of at least getting himself in the conversation. Of course, a lot of things have to happen, but at 40 to one, I'll take that. I felt like last year was that first step getting back to where we are used to seeing him, which was a five and a half war season. Either he's that's the new Bregman, which is fantastic, or it's a stepping stool back to that MVP candidate. Remember, he was a runner up one year. Obviously, you got to get some of these guys out of the way in Trout, Judge and Otani. But that's the assumption in a long shot. And and I think of all of the names beyond the the 20 to 1 odds, Bregman's the only guy that's kind of been there before and I think could get back. It's not like he's old. I like that play a lot too because I think it's important to pick guys on good teams because you have to either have an historic year or you have to be on a team that makes the playoffs. So Bregman on the Astros. And there's also storylines surrounding yes. that one, right? Altuve's out for the first couple of months. You know, Jordan is coming into the season with a hamate bone. Um, he's supposed to play opening day, but that's might hurt you at least in the early goings. Bregman could be that guy at the end of the year where we say, wow, Bregman had a seven and a half war season for the, best, the best team, team in, in baseball. baseball. Right. Yep. He might win the MVP. Otani could go crazy. Out. Exactly. Yeah. So there's storylines around that. I, I was either thinking Adley or Bregman. So I'm glad you brought it up. Right. All of a sudden, like Robin becomes Batman with Alex Bregman, right? Yep, yep. If if Tucker is underwhelming and we know Altuve's hurt and Jordan might be hurt, like Robin becoming Batman is a great MVP story. And we know 
that humans bet on the MVP. They bet on these awards. So it's not just a war accumulation thing, which is what takes me to my long shot. And do not laugh me out of the Zoom. 100 to 1 on Garrett Cole to win the American League MVP. And the reason I say Garrett Cole, I know, like, all right, Aram's already laughing. That's not very. I try, nice. I'm, I'm holding it in really loud. Well, Bite dude. your tongue but, like a normal. But before person. before you even continue, like to your point, it's much easier to argue the other side of a 100 to one. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, yeah, it's easy for us to be like, well, no, we can't. He's a pitcher, and he's not. That's why win. it's 100 to one. 100 to one for a reason. You put down one dollar, you win 100. You put down 10, you win a thousand. It's just, it's a crazy long shot, and I'm here for it. Correct. Garrett Cole at plus 10,000. Uh, he is the second shortest odds among pitchers, only behind Jacob deGrom at plus 8,000. deGrom is not going to be on a team that is Yankee good. And, and here's my thinking here. Carlos Rodon's already hurt. Luis Severino's already on the IL. Frankie Montas probably isn't going to throw it all this year. So all of a sudden, that five-headed monster in the rotation turns into two. What does Garrett Cole do? He throws a fuck ton of innings. So if this guy recaptures that mid two ZRA form, and we know how dominant the stuff can be. We know how good he was in the postseason. He was a three, five last year. He allowed the most home runs in the American league. That's a problem. I'm betting on that not to happen, but if he is near the 220 inning marker with a mid two ZRA and the Yankees win the division with a banged up rotation all year long, how do you not think about that guy like almost carrying this team unless judge is Roger Maris again? You know what I mean? But this is assuming judge takes a little step back and Cole takes another step up to recapture form. So that's my thinking there. I get it. Um, the only thing I'll say, cause I, I looked into betting on pitchers to win the MVP and um, you know, where the odds stack out historically, right. And the MVP started in 1956 only 12 pitchers have ever been named MVP. Yeah. Most recently, it was Verlander, it was Kershaw, but this is, you know, we're years removed from that. I remember um, Dennis Eckersley won it. Isn't that nuts? I think he won an MVP at one point um, as a closer for the A's back in the 90s. Betting on a pitcher, you have to have them go so crazy. And I, and I said at the beginning, I didn't want to tear this bet down, but it's just like with Otani, I don't even think it's a guarantee that Garrett Cole is a better season on the mound than Otani does. And then whatever Otani does at the plate, but you said to yourself, the narrative surrounding Garrett Cole with the depleted starting rotation, Garrett Cole throwing 230 innings at a two, five ERA, which he has the potential to. It's just, can he limit the home runs? So that's, that's it. The like it's, it's keeping the ball in the yard is the difference between the low threes and the, and, and the low to mid twos is, is keeping the ball in the yard. So we'll see. 2011, Justin Verlander won the AL MVP. He won the pitching triple crown, which was ERA, uh, strikeouts, and wins, or is it innings pitched? He led in all four. So he I was think it's innings pitched. Guy. I think it's innings pitched. So Verlander, 251 innings. I don't think Cole's going to get to 251, but he could get to 230, right? Nobody gets but to 250. 230 is the new 250. That was a decade ago. Exactly. Well, true. We, we move the goalposts a little bit. Say he goes 230. Is 2-4-0 realistic of an ERA? I think yeah. so, right? And then Verlander in 251 innings punched out 250. So that's nine Ks per nine. We know Cole's going to be better than that. So if he's 250 punch outs in 230 innings and he has a 2-4 ERA and the Yankees win the division, all of a sudden we might be talking about this guy. So that's I agree. My I could totally see it. I also don't think that we should sleep on the 2022 American League MVP and Aaron Judge. I mean, yeah, he could he could hit <laughs> fifty five home runs again if he stays healthy. But I agree with you. I at a hundred to one, yeah, that pitch makes a lot of sense. Cool. All it's, right. it's not worth putting a unit on it. Maybe like a tenth of a unit and just yeah. try. Because then you're Slap sitting at the end of the year. It. Even if he finishes third in MVP, you're thinking I was a hundred to one a fun for a guy year. who finished third. Like, you're having a that's fun awesome. year. Yeah. Imagine you bet on Zach Britton that year. He finished third in Cy Young. You're like if I'm he, a genius, even though he didn't win. If you throw two bucks on Garrett Cole to win MVP, you could walk away $200 richer at the end. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Of course, it's not gambling advice. Everybody. And it's not even going to happen, but... No, it's not it going to happen. It might. <laughs> All right. NL MVP. There are three guys at less than 1,000 odds. 
Juan Soto is the uh, favorite at plus 550. Mookie Betts at plus 900. Ronald Acuna Jr. at plus 900. And then you've got three guys at plus 1,000. Fernando Tatis Jr., Paul Goldschmidt, the reigning MVP, and Trey Turner, who just had an incredible World Baseball Classic. Aram, where are you going in terms of front runner for NL MVP? Yeah, you know, if if the odds were better on on Acuna, I would have I would I would have definitely considered it a bit more. You know, I think that the narrative is is obviously there. We, we're seeing him already swing the bat better now that that knee is good to go. But I, I just don't like the value there. So I, I went with Braves for both my my short and long shot. But I'll go with the quote unquote shorter shot, which is still a pretty good value. Austin Riley at plus sixteen hundred is the guy that I love here. I, I, we talked about him when we were debating, you know, Riley versus Seager between me and Peter, but, but also I, I just feel like this is the year that Riley kind of kicks it into Paul Goldschmidt mode. Like, I think he takes that step from, from where he was last year to Paul Goldschmidt mode. And ironically, I was watching a spring training game the other day and uh, they were talking about how, how Austin Riley actually went, was referred to the same swing lab that Paul Goldschmidt went to last year to unlock a little bit more power and unlock a little bit more, you know, in his swing. Uh, Austin Riley feels like he can unlock a little bit more, which is terrifying. Obviously, Goldschmidt unlocked a little bit more. We were wondering where the hell that came from last year. Maybe that had something to do with it. I'm buying the tread video, basically, is what I'm doing here. But regardless, I loved Riley. That narrative put me over the top. 16 to 1 odds on Austin Riley, I'm in. If there's, I love anything, if there's anything I love doing, it's buying tread video. So I'm all the way in on that. This, this is the adjacent. This is the hitter version of buying the tread video. I'm and in. another reason I like that arm and um, with both of their swings, like Paul Goldschmidt, like the way he loads, like you have to be so strong to hit like him. Who's as strong as him? It's Austin Riley. Like Austin ox. Riley, he is such a beast. So I love that point. And I think that's a great bet too. Um, it's funny. I almost subscribe to the theory that you should bet on Juan Soto every single year because he's going to win one, right? Even at plus 500, if you continue to bet on him, more likely than not, one of those is going to hit. So if you bet on him at plus 500 for five straight years, you'll probably make your money back. So I actually do think Soto, even though his odds are terrible, they've been worse before. Last year, he was plus 300 to win. Then he had that down season. Now he's up to five or 600. I think he is worthy of a play because... I still subscribe to the belief that he is the best left-handed hitter on planet earth. Like Jordan is amazing. Bryce Harper is amazing, but I just think with um, Soto's ability to get on base and hit 40 home runs, I would put him as, I guess the short odds, but my actual pick and something that I actually bet on is Francisco Lindor at 30 to one or 25 to one. I bet it at 30 to one. It's down to plus 2,500. I just look at a field and it just feels really crowded and there's, just some question marks that you can take out of them. And I even wrote my article arm, the th- the two players who I thought had the least amount of question marks and the best ability to do it based on odds were Francisco Lindor and Austin Riley. So I was just deciding between the two, but I went with Lindor because the odds are almost double. I look at Lindor as possibly the best defensive player on planet Earth. And I think with the banning of the shift, that's only going to help his war totals. And people are going to look at Lindor and say, wow, he really is all world defensively. He was a guy who used to hit 38 home runs. And last year he stole upwards of 20 bases. I think if he can get back to his time when he was in Cleveland as a guy who's a 275, 350, 500 slug guy, which he was from 2017 to 2019 with the guardians. If he can get back to that in his third year, finally settled down, knowing his role also coming off the WBC where he, you know, he's got more of a, he's got that adrenaline cooking, right? He was just in live games instead of spring training. Hopefully that carries over. There's a lot of small edges, but ultimately him having the 13th or 14th best odds. I think he should be more in like the six or seven range. Do I think he's going to win? I do not super confident, obviously, but a guy who's finished top nine in MVP voting in four different seasons shouldn't be 13th in odds when a lot of the rule changes are only going to benefit him. No, I mean, Lindor, like if you've got a 29 year old that is truly a $300 million player at plus 2,500, stop thinking, just do. Yeah, that was my thinking. And it was funny, Arm. I love that you brought up Riley because it was like Riley or Lindor. And I love the Riley pick. Yeah, especially with how we finished the year last year. I, yeah. that, that also kind of gives me a good feeling going into this one. But Jack, And I don't think he's as bad defensively as he was last year. I think he's a better defender. He showed that the year before. 
And I think he'll be even better defensively. So he could put up a seven war easily. What were you saying? I said, who you got? Um, I close my eyes and I see a 500 start through three weeks for the San Diego Padres. And then I see Fernando Tatis coming back and going 40, 30. So <laughs> Tatis at plus 1000 is my guy. Yeah. I just, I think it's tough for, I don't know how voters will respond following a PD. But thing. Bonds won four straight. You know what I mean? Like they didn't know about active. the PDs though. What do you mean? They didn't know about it. <laughs> like, it's a very different climate now. I guess um, I'm not too worried about that because Tatis has the ability to be so undeniably great that you can't not vote for him. Like, I think that's the one guy in the, aside from Shohei, right? Like if Shohei got popped, we would still love watching him all the time. And Shohei is never going to get popped because you're only born with that ability. And like only one person ever. Baseball would be so fucked if Shohei baseball got would popped. be in flames. Baseball would be canceled if Shohei yeah. Otani got popped. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> I I liked I liked the Tatis you know pick in in a, in a vacuum. The odds are kind of telling. I think Vegas is one. I yeah. think afraid that a lot of people are going to bet on that, and two think it's very possible. You see what he did in an abbreviated season the last time we saw him play. He put, he went nuclear. Hey, this guy can impact the game in so many ways, and and when he gets hot, I don't know if there's a hitter that can really just go on homer streaks the way he can. So I still like the pick, even though the value might not be the same as as some of the others. Yeah, I I think Arm and I have the same long shot. So if you want to just knock that out, we can do it. Yeah, one, two, three, Matt Olson. Mike, oh, <laughs> Michael Harris. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's okay. Let's talk about it. It's a party in the A. Um. I go with Harris because I think that this guy can be a war merchant. Like, I mean, he can be a platinum glove level defender. And if he hits 300 and goes 25-25 or, hey, maybe flirt with 30-30, I think more likely he gets the bags than the homers. We could be looking at this guy. 30-30 is possible. And that's got to be the, the the one way he does it, right? It's 30-30 with, with the defense that he brings. My concern is the approach. Um I, I could just see him going through some some spells in a sophomore year. Uh, you know, we, we see the sophomore slump. He's like kind of a candidate for that. I don't think he's going to regress like some of the, the the folks in the analytics community have made it out to be because he hits the ball on the ground so frequently. He, he hits the shit out of the ball. He's going to be fine. But I do think that the approach is a little expansive. You know, when you don't walk, it, it does kind of, you know, lend you to be a bit streaky. Uh, but I, how, how can you deny 30 home run power? that speed with with the ability to steal more bags and the defense up the middle. I, I like it. And Michael Harris, my probably my favorite player in baseball. So I'm all aboard. Why Olsen? Because he's going to go think, nuts. Yeah, he is going to go nuts. <laughs> he's going to go nuts. nuts. 50 homers. <laughs> yeah. You know the old the old thing where, like, you know, we, we thought he was going to go nuts last year. Like, oh, he's out of Oakland. He's going to go crazy. And he didn't. And then you don't pick him the next year because you felt like you were a year early, but you just kind of forget about it. And then he, ha- he does it. Like, I feel like we were a year early. I think he was getting adjusted. We talked about the whole shit show with Freeman. And there was a lot that I think a guy that was playing in Oakland, that was kind of an unsung player that not a lot of people paid atten- attention to now was handling all of these crazy things that came with the, the narrative of Freddie out Olsen in big trade, big extension. Uh, there was a lot weighing on on a guy that came from playing legitimately in the minor leagues, which is what the Coliseum can be. So um, I think it clicks for him this year. He was good last year. I think he could hit 40 this year. And he has gone crazy in spring training. I don't put a lot of stock in his spring training. But when you do what Olsen has done this spring, to me, I feel like he's he's going to go nuts this year. He hit 39 homers with the Oakland Coliseum as his home ballpark. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah. And in 25 to one year, odds, by the way, in a okay. down year, he hit 34 last year. He yeah, did yeah. 50. <laughs> like he could go nuts. I have, I have a super, super long shot, but I believe the odds are completely mispriced. And it has to do with a roster move by the Cardinals, which I thought was fascinating, sending Dylan Carlson down or just demoting him to kind of a bench role. I don't yeah. know if you guys saw that lately. Yeah, they didn't send him down to the minor leagues, but they're looking to kind of platoon him. Tyler O'Neill is 200 to one. Mm -hmm. And as a guy starting in center field with that much talent, the ability to steal bases, play well, he played well for Canada in the WBC at 200 to one. That's a misprice for a center fielder who can play good defense and then could go crazy. Will he win it? Probably not. But $1 to win 200, $2 to win 400, 
10 to win 2000 bucks. Come on now. That is, those odds are just mispriced. I think you should be around 100 to 1. I have him circled. I have him circled right here too. I didn't put him as my long shot because I swore Jack was going to. Just want to talk about him. No. Just I, talking ball. We can talk I have about him, him circled. <laughs> I have him legit circled. I, I think it already updated from when you last looked to that point because I no have way. him at 150. 150 <laughs> yeah, there you though. go. It, so, he's mispriced. He was mispriced I, at that line. I bet you by two weeks into the season, he'll be 75 to one. Yeah. Just because to Peter's point, he hits the shit out of the ball and he's fast. Like if he has, and he has center now. He has a needle in the haystack chance, which is enough to, to lay down a couple bucks again on a really good team playing center field. And in a National League competition with no show Otani. So it basically yeah. kind of is anyone's ball game. Like Paul Goldschmidt's odds, you know, I bet we're 15 to 1 last year. You know, any anyone in the National League can win it. That's why when looking at the National League, like this is where I think you can find the best value because you don't have that bad man in Los Angeles or his teammate, the other bad man in the way, or Aaron Judge. Like there are just so many donkeys in the American League while in the National League it's spread out, a lot of good defense. It's a more interesting league, I think, the National League than the American League. Probably. Um, also, want to shout out Chaz Jism plus sixty six hundred. Um, we we just talked about Michael Harris, Gold Glove center fielder. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, Gold Glove are going to be in center. Jazz promised us a Gold Glove in center over yeah. both Michael Harris and Tyler O'Neill. So when he does that and have a four hundred and fifty WRC plus, we're talking about this guy is like better than prime bonds. He's, or he's, he's cursed you from know, MLB the show. You know what he's kind of close to prime bonds in right now is lying, but uh, <laughs> you know, at least he's not perjuring himself. Yeah. Um. All right. Another bet MGM special. I need no explanation. I just need a yes. It interests Peter's me. Peter's gonna hate it. I already. Uh, I, I know. Already, I you. know. I just need a yes. It interests me, or no, it does not interest me, and like move on from there. Um. The Padre versus the field bet. One of Soto, Tatis, Machado. And Bogarts versus the field. Can I tell you the line that I think it would be actionable at? Yes. I would bet on that if it was plus 300 or more. It's plus 185. There you go. Yeah, because you might as well, like, I love Xander. You can cross him out. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's really Machado, Tatis, Soto, and you might as well just bet them individually, right? Like, Yeah, you might as well bet them individually. The payouts like, I would just, better. I would just rather... I would just rather bet one soda plus 500. Yeah. Like, just give yeah. me that. You know, 100%. All right. Uh, Cy Young's, as we keep on rolling, these are bet MGM odds. We'll start with the AL Cy Young as I get this queued up on the iPad. And Jacob deGrom is the odds on favorite at plus 600. Garrett Cole plus 700. Dylan Cease and Alec Manoa plus 900. And then Shohei Otani at plus 1,000. Though Those are the top five. Um, I'm going to start. I already teased my guys an MVP long shot. I think Garrett Cole uh, is my play. Garrett Cole's your play. I like yeah. it. Um, my play. Um, again, I'm not, I, I'm not betting on this. Oh, uh, I'm field. not. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would go Kevin Gosman at 16 to one. Um, he is a war accumulator. Like when you look back at F war leaderboards at baseball reference leaderboards, Kevin Gosman is continually up there because he strikes out a ton of guys, doesn't throws a ton of innings, and doesn't walk anybody. His stuff is fantastic. He's going to be in a rotation on a very good team, most likely facing more lineups that aren't big-time AL East lineups in small stadiums. I think Kevin Gosman, now that he's really settled into Toronto, has a fantastic year for the Blue Jays. And I just think he shouldn't be this far down here because I look at some guys with some innings issues, guys who are already hurt to start the year. And I look at a workhorse like Kevin Gosman and you think to yourself, well, he's most likely not going to get hurt because he hasn't been getting hurt, at least for a very long time. This could be the year he puts it all together. And I think 16 to one is is well worth it when you look at the rest of the field. Yeah. Yeah, so like guys with with arm flare ups over the last year, you, Degrom, who's the odds on favorite. Um, then you've got Carlos Rodon, who's in the top six or seven. Shane McClanahan, like Shane Bieber, even like the all, Luis Castillo, like all those guys. I'm a little wary of like you know being able to sustain the the bulk of an entire season, which is why you know it, it's it's one of those spots where you got to find the guy that's that's also pitching a lot of innings. Um, it's not the best value compared to some of the other picks, but I just think if everything clicks for Dylan Cease this year, he could run away with it. And at yeah. plus 900, 
Yeah, I, I, I think those odds are good because I think the DeGrom odds are terrible. I think a plus 600 for DeGrom, that's a joke. So to me, getting Cease at the third best odds, I think he should be the odds on favorite after what mm-hmm. he did last year, or at least close to it. So to get him at that value, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week, nine to one odds on Cease. Uh, he's going to have to shove for this White Sox team, and I think he's going to. Has to. Um, all right. I've got a long shot. I kind of cheated because right before we started recording, you guys mentioned that you consider a long shot plus 2000. My longer shot is plus 1800. And I go with Christian Javier here. And I know that that Peter is big on, you know, what the rule changes can do for certain teams and certain hitters. Let's talk about what this could do for Christian Javier. I'm worried about Framber Valdez, even though I think that he has a great middle infield and Jeremy Pena is an elite defensive shortstop. Um, Christian Javier doesn't allow ground balls. So limiting shift, I don't think that's an issue for a guy that rolled ground balls at a 25% clip last year. Everybody elevates when they touch it. And he was 12 Ks per nine. He was a mid two ERA last year, a 170 batting average against. And we know he's a strikeout artist with no hit stuff. He started two combined no hitters, one of which in the World Series. I think this guy can come out not more often than not, but often enough with no hit type stuff to almost like take over that eighth ship from Fromber. I like it. I mean, he's just really, really good. And the odds are juicy enough where it's well worth it because while I used to be a Javier hater, I have become (laughs) just a Javier truther because like you have to have a special set of nuts to throw a no hitter in the world series against the Phillies. Correct. You got to have something deep down there. He didn't look nervous at all. That's what I was pissed off about him because not only was his stuff so good that game, calm as can be. It looked like he was getting lunch. Like it was just like another day. He brings his lunchbox to the stadium. He's like, I'm going to throw a no hitter today. So I think that's a great bet. Um, when I'm looking at super, super long shot odds, what I look for is guys that come up that are in groupings of guys who have no shot. I'm going to read you some names in a row that have very similar odds. Jose Barrios, Mike Clevenger, Drew Rasmussen, Andrew Heaney, Zach Rinke, Cole Irvin. Drew Rasmussen's name shoots out of there. It's like a flare. It's like when you're watching World War Z and they're trying to get off the top of the apartment building, throwing the flare out there. It's like, 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 how did he get there? How did he get there? Did he get lost? The odds haven't adjusted to it adjusted to him he's 125 to one is he gonna win it probably not but there's so much value there we're gonna see him throw a couple of great starts in a row and those line and that line is gonna drop in half so if you're just looking for straight up value he is probably the best value in any of these races maybe tyler o'neill 200 to one or anything like that yeah i think he has a shot to win this cy young like when you consider drew rasmussen might end up being, you know, Garrett Cole's going to accumulate more innings. But would any of us be surprised if Rasmussen has a better ERA at the end of the year than a guy like Garrett Cole? And Garrett Cole's 100 to 1 to win the MVP. Rasmussen's 125 to 1 to win the Cy Young. I'm yep. going Drew Rasmussen as my mega long shot. Fair. So my long shot's not as long, but still, still fits the bill uh, by a good margin. George Kirby at 40 to 1. That was, um, you're you're taking all my second off. That is perfect. I love it. Did I? Am I? Yeah. yeah so, like, so I was like, Drew Rasmussen or George Kirby? Great. Like, so I, I love Kirby. I, I've loved Kirby since he was a prospect. Uh, and, and just seeing him kind of continue on this on this progression has been pretty cool. He really hit another stride in the second half. ERA was like right at a three, two nine nine FIP. Another guy that doesn't walk anybody. The strikeout numbers continue to get better. And I think they're good enough now. He strikes out more than a batter per inning. And I think he's going to be better in that department. All that he was missing really was just like that out pitch, kind of getting a little bit more swing and miss. And I think he's continued to develop that. And that's gotten better for him. You know, the command's going to be there. He piled up 130 innings last year. I think he can get up to 160, 170 this year, maybe even more than that. Um, It's really about the swing and miss stuff. I think he can get there. I'm sure he's been working on that in a pitch lab somewhere all year. We just didn't get much video. Uh, But this guy has the thing you can't teach, which is pounding the strike zone and at a level that we just don't see much in today's game. And the fastball still touches upper 90s. If it all clicks for George Kirby, he can be an ace. And and that's enough for me to, to sprinkle on him at 40 to 1 odds. Love it. Quick pause to tell you that we've got some really exciting news. The reason we've been citing BetMGM lines 
is because we are at the start of doing some great stuff with BetMGM and more details are going to follow in the coming days. Um, wink, wink, tune into Peter's live show um, on what Twitch, right? On Twitch at just baseball fans. And yeah, that'll be live opening day. We're doing an opening day stream one to 3 p.m. Arm's going to be giving picks. Colby, a lot of people from just baseball as well as from around the uh, Twitter sphere and just you know, independent journalists that I've met, a lot of really great people making bets. And it's all courtesy of BetMGM, our friends yes. at the greatest sports book in the world. And a lot more exciting stuff with just baseball in a bunch of other type things. Um, so we're really excited for this partnership with BetMGM. Again, more information in the coming days, but you can use the code right now. It is active yep. right now, just baseball. One word, no spaces. If you need help spelling, J U S T B A S E B A L L. Oh, Folks. yeah. There's you no get K our in shirts there. redone. There's <laughs> no K in there. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, but just baseball. The code just baseball. One word is live at BetMGM. So feel free to use that. And uh, we we can't wait to yeah. uh, bring you a bunch of stuff courtesy of BetMGM. Yeah. So let us know if you tail some of these picks. Let us know who you tail. I'm very curious to see what the uh, some of the audience is uh, potentially taking here. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Jack, your long shot, um, Cy Young. Uh, I mentioned Javier plus eighteen hundred. So Perfect. we are going to jump to the national faux long shot. Remember, yeah, faux long, long shot. shot. That's why I was confused. I'm yeah, just kind of a it, bitch, right? dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, National League Cy Young. Sandy and Corbin Burns, co-favorites at plus 500 on BetMGM. Justin Verlander at plus 600. Max Scherzer at plus 800. And Spencer Strider is the only guy shorter than 10 to 1 left at plus 900. After that, you get Nola Freed, Gallon, Wheeler, Urias, and the beat keeps on moving. I'll get mine out of the way. Like, I, I understand the appeal of Wheeler. I understand the appeal of Nola. I understand the appeal of Julio Urias, who was great in, you know, a quote unquote limited sample last year compared to some other guys. But Sandy was like a walking complete game. And I can't not watch that guy every time he toes the rubber. So for that reason and that reason only, he's my favorite pick. I think a five to one, it's not even that bad of a bet. Um, Cause if you're looking at a long shot MVP, I don't even mind Sandy at 100 to one or what is it? 75 to one or something like that. Cause he's going to be the workhorse. He's going to be the guy who leads the league in innings. He's going to be the guy with the two five ERA with a ton of strikeouts and his win probability added is going to be nuts. Oh, even if like, he's kind of like Soto, right? Like even though we won it last year, if he's at his best, he's going to win. So especially in it's... that ballpark, it, like he is pretty much, you know, he's talking about Cal Quantrill at home, like Sandy at home didn't get as much fanfare because the Marlins sucked and maybe he'd lose one zero, but Sandy at home was purely dominant in that right stadium below two at home. You're yeah, right below like, two. You had no shot. Like it, you, you could win the game because you knew you only needed one because the Marlins <laughs> probably scoring zero, but like you knew as, as a team, you probably weren't going to get the ball out of the yard there. And, and the, you know, I think w when you have that to fall back on a sub two ERA at home, and now you don't have to play the Mets as much. You don't have to play the Braves as much. The Mets were like the one team that kind of the Mets and the Dodgers were the two teams that like, I think if you subtracted them from Sandy season, he might've had like a sub two. Um, it, it, it's one of those things that I, I'm a big fan of his. That's always going to be, I think I, to Peter's point, kind of similar to Soto. He's going to have a shot every single year. He's on the field. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go next army? You want me to? Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go with my, with my, for, with my regular pick, which is Max Fried. And I guess I'm so, which is really funny because I was previously accused of being biased against the Braves. And here I am picking the Braves to win every single award. Wait till Jared Schuster is my rookie of the year. No, but, but actually Max Fried, like this guy seemed like, and he's been great. He's already proven that he is one of the better left-handed pitchers in baseball, one of the best, but I thought last year really solidified himself as you know, in the conversation as the best left-handed pitcher in baseball, a 2480 ERA in 185 innings, right? So it's a career high in ERA besides the shortened season. So it's a career high in innings. All of the peripherals look good. And this is a guy that's going to be pitching for a, a contract pretty soon. So, you know, that's something that I think matters too. Uh, I, I am interested to see how the Braves handle that uh, and, and where he might be playing next if they don't extend him. But this is a guy that's definitely pitching for something on top of that hits free agency in 2025, but I think he's going to continue to build off of what was a dominant season last year. And again, a guy that's an ace for one of baseball's best teams doesn't walk anybody that always bodes well for, for someone that I'm picking. 
So entirely different situations, but do you think Freed may be a little pissed that Strider got the pre-arb deal and and he didn't? I mean, like, again, Vengeance tour. Freed, like Freed only has two more years of arbitration remaining, but AA could have absolutely bought out those two years of arbitration and bought a couple of years in free agency. It's a little bit more expensive than Strider, but that was an opportunity to be had. I'm sure Dansby was kind of pissed about it, that he didn't get it. Uh, Freddie was clearly upset that he didn't get his extension. And they all Freed, nuts. Freed may be a guy that gets pissed and goes nuclear. He's yep. way too old. He's older than 24, so that's yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> he can rent, he can rent a car, right? Is Freed off his parents' health insurance yet? He's worth more than $10 million, so it's impossible for AA to do it now. Yeah, brutal. <laughs> brutal. Uh, so my pick, so when I'm looking at the uh, – National League Cy Young and American League Cy Young, I, I look at who's most guaranteed to probably throw 200 innings. And because I think that's important. I think it's, you know, war accumulation. I think if you throw 200 innings, you're automatically going to be thrust into that conversation. And this guy's odds don't reflect his ability to throw 200 innings for a really good team and end up being really good. And that's Aaron Nola at um, 12 to one. Um yeah. He's, I think, what was he, second or third last year in war. He's consistently over 220 strikeouts. He's done that each of the last two seasons, 200 innings year in and year out. He's also working with storylines with Ranger Suarez beginning the year on the IL, with Andrew Painter beginning the year on the IL, with Zach Wheeler having possible injury concerns there after his arm kind of fell apart um, last year in the playoffs. It didn't, it fell apart towards the end. In the in the beginning, he was unreal. And I, I still think pitch for pitch, Wheeler is a better pitcher. But for a guy who I can feel like I can lock in 200 innings, a good win loss record, which maybe matter to some voters, um, tons of strikeouts and a really high war. Nola, I feel like should be in the same range as a Max Scherzer at around eight to one. The fact that he's 12 to one, there's some value there. Uh, so I would go Aaron Nola. I, I saw Zip's projections for Wheeler and Nola. And if I'm remembering off the dome correctly, Wheeler was at like 190 projected innings and Nola was at like 210, 215. Wow. Yeah. That's three more starts. Yeah. Oh, maybe I mean, that's, four. That's like he averages seven innings a start, too. Like he is a workhorse. They don't pull him out in the fifth inning or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, long shot for me, plus 3,000, Logan Webb. Logan Webb is going to have minimal help in San Francisco. Like there are some guys that, Peter, I know you like that, that are in that rotation. I worry that San Francisco is not going to be that good to give him the notoriety, but Logan Webb had a sub three ERA last year, very sneaky. And like, he doesn't, you know, light the world on fire in the K's per nine department, but he gets ground balls. I'm not too worried about the shift here. He's not going to allow home runs in that ballpark. Um, I like Logan Webb a lot. I think that that guy is like, I'm not going to say he's a lock to have an ERA near three or below every year, but it, it does feel like he's never going to have that year where all of a sudden we're looking back and it's, oh, how did Logan Webb have a 4-2 ERA this year? Yeah, I, I, I like the pick, um, and I think the value is there. The only reason I'm somewhat worried about Logan Webb this year, and you said you're not that worried about it. I'm not super worried about it, but it just is something to bring up, how For he sure. is a ground ball the pitcher. Ground Same thing and with Framber Valdez. A, yeah. It's on a Giants team that utilizes the shift top five. Like, they are crazy they use the shift all the time and now that they don't get it with not a great defense and a lot of old veterans like there could be just a couple more balls that squeak through for singles and it's not his fault and that what would have been caught last year so i like the pick um but i wouldn't bet it fair what are you betting <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> i'm betting something that you definitely shouldn't bet but the odds make a lot of sense freddie peralta is 200 to 1 the OG. Like he, he's not. He, he's in the same breath as Mitch Keller, Dre Jameson, and Taiwan Walker and Alex Bro, Cobb. Dre Jameson's nice. He's <laughs> way better than those guys. Like, it's just, you're seeing flares. You're seeing guys whose odds are just mispriced. He's coming off a year where he was banged up, but he still has one of the better fastball slider combinations in the National League. Of course, he's behind Woodruff and Burns, but if he were to have a miraculous season, he would be up there. And I do expect him to have a really solid season. And the fact that his odds are with those guys, he's way better than them. He can be considered a very strong two, even on a contender, I think, at his best. Is it worth a sprinkle? Maybe for a dollar, but don't go crazy. He's not going to win it, 
but those odds are just stupid. Like he's way better than those odds reflect. Yeah. That's fair. I'm going to go, go with a guy with the same odds uh, and a friend of the show. Uh, maybe we'll get back on at some point this season uh, who has looked great this spring. I'm going with Jesus Lazardo at the same odds. I, Look, it's all about health for Zeus. We've talked about that. Um, you know, he's looked really good this spring. He started varying his looks a little bit, which which is just scary, man. Like if this guy's doing what Nestor was doing, you know, with the throw off your timing and stuff. While throwing 100. Yeah, while <laughs> yeah. throwing 98 to 100 with like the nastiest curveball and one of the nastiest curveballs in, in, in Major League Baseball. This guy's going to be an issue. So it's about health. He was dominant down the stretch last year. He was averaging about nine strikeouts, eight and nine strikeouts per start. Um, if he catches lightning in a bottle, it's not impossible. So at, at those odds, I'll take it. I actually think that might be a better bet than Freddie because Jesus Zardo pitches more in a pitcher's park. Yeah. I think he has more upside than Freddie does. Like Jesus Zardo's upside is incredible. Yeah. He can become yeah. just on stuff alone from just the profile of the pitcher, like through his best 50 innings versus everybody else's best 50 innings i think he'd be considered like a top what 10 lefty in baseball i mean i actually kind of like that one better than freddie this guy was a consensus top prospect top pitching prospect in baseball like consensus top three at least yeah. for for multiple years pitched in two post seasons right away they brought him up at, from the minors to throw out of the bullpen in the playoffs for oakland like and he succeeded it was really all injuries that really derailed him and, and caused him to kind of lose that release point and so many different things. And now it looks like he's back. I just hope he can stay healthy because awesome dude and just so much fun to watch on the field. I think if you brought someone to a ballpark that doesn't know ball that well to watch Jesus Lizardo, they would watch him over the course of a start. If he had a good start and be like, wow, he's definitely an all-star, right? That That's what Lizardo is. I mean, this stuff is so stupidly good and he can absolutely, you know, like, go through six, no hit and get yeah. like a bloop single in the seventh. And that's a great day at the ballpark for Lazardo. I, I think that's his jam. I love that. Yeah. All right. We got about 10 minutes to get through both rookie of the years. Let's start with the AL because this race just sucks. Yeah. Gunnar Henderson is the leader at plus plus two fifty. That's an objectively bad bet. Yeah, um, Gunnar is great guy. I think he's going to ball out. Go listen to the interview with him on show and go with Taylor Davis. Um, you've got a bunch of other guys uh, under plus 1,000. you got Masataki Yoshida with the Red Sox at plus 600. New Yankee shortstop Anthony Volpe at plus 650. Hunter Brown, Grayson Rodriguez, and Tristan Casas at plus 900. Can I just call bullshit on the on the G-Rod starting Norfolk thing? I mean, come on. Bullshit. Michael, come Elias, on. what are you doing? I, I saw Locked on Orioles. They put it perfectly. He just can't stop putting his foot in his mouth dude like <laughs> so was gonna so i was i was fine with the decision yes but don't say what he said we yeah. were yeah. hoping what he for said was more. bizarre yeah like well, and, and stalked I, compared to what we thought you would be i was no, gonna quote it. tweet it and say like you know share my thoughts but i knew i was gonna get a bunch of like you know old head replies of like He's a big boy. It's pro baseball. He didn't. Would you rather them lie or whatever? Yeah, like I get it. Like he's really talented, and you were hoping he'd do more. That's implied when you send him down. That's Correct. implied. You know, it's like that was enough. But that said, like it does impact the rookie of the year a little bit for a guy that is a pitcher because he misses a few starts out of the year. We'll see. But he'll be up by the third start of the season. I can almost promise you he's going to dominate Norfolk and be up. No, I mean it sounds like manipulation. That that. Yeah cut and dry even That's though the new on. cba rules don't even incentivize that as much anymore like i think it's literally just foot in mouth it incentivizes you making the roster on opening day if you are on the opening day roster and you finish top three in rookie of the year voting your team pick. gets a pick after the end of the first round and grayson could easily do that he yes. would be in the running to do so yes um I, which is why i love what the yankees did with volpe and they have no pitching the right. Royals have no pitching. It's right. different even for the Yankees when they have Peraza and the whatever IKF can bring you. Like they need pitching right now. It made no sense. None. Yeah. Uh, staying away from Gunner, I like I think Masataka Yoshida is the right thing to do at plus six hundred. The guy's fucking thirty, and he might hit three hundred. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think it's very simple. It's it's very Seiya Suzuki from a year ago from Peter and Seiya Suzuki's odds last year were plus three twenty. So you're getting almost double and. Yeah, I think I think Yoshida is a great bet. Um, two, I think are worthy of sprinkles 
is Oscar Colas for one with the White Sox because it's looking like he will be on the opening day roster and there's a good chance he'll be in right field. Yeah, exactly. And like when you get a guy like that with that much talent, who's going to get a ton of run with the White Sox who are lacking of outfielders. I think that's a good pick. And Logan Ohapi with the uh, Los Angeles Angels at 16 to one. So both those guys, 15 to one, 16 to one, both are going to get plenty of run. Both are great prospects and both, you know, are, are seeing rave reviews from spring training. So I think, I'm not going to be betting personally on this American League Rookie of the Year race because I think Gunner is just going to win it, but the odds are terrible. But I think those guys are worthy of sprinkles. I think they're both really good players. For sure. So Logan Logan Ohapi was my pick um, at, at 16-1. to 1. He rakes uh, all of the, the metrics from the minor league season really stood out to me. He hits a lot of the thresholds that I look for in a prospect in terms of contact, in terms of exit velocities, and he's a good catcher. Being the everyday catcher, for a team that has Otani and Trout and, you know, we think might finally make the playoffs, that narrative plays, especially if he's putting up numbers. And I think he could be, you know, one of the better hitting rookies while catching at a pretty good level. He was a glove first catcher initially. My long shot, and I'll just throw this in there too, is Asturi Ruiz at 25 to 1. Asturi Ruiz, his biggest issue was the power. He was not, he had not one batted ball over a hundred miles an hour in his big league stint and barely was producing batted balls over a hundred something miles an hour in the minor leagues. He's already popped a one Oh nine this spring training for a home run. He's popped several over one Oh three, one Oh fours. He's added strength. He led the minor leagues in stolen bases. He led all of professional baseball in stolen bases last year. We're talking about rule changes. This guy could steal 50 with ease this year. He's going to be in the lineup every single day. He might be one of their best hitters. He's got no pressure on him. If Ruiz steals 60 and hits all right, he's got to be in the conversation. 25 to 1 for me is a no-brainer for Asturi Ruiz. That's one I really like. I'll throw it to you, Peter. Thank you for adding analysis, Aram, because Asturi Ruiz was also my long shot pick at 25 to 1. Um, I think that a lot of voters are going to say, damn, this cat can burn on the base pads and be like, yes, rookie of the year. 70 bags. Can't deny that. Super mega max long shot. Um, Will Brennan is probably going to play. And he's 200 to one. What? Do it. Exactly. Yeah. So that was one I was looking at of a guy. When I'm looking at guys around those odds, it's mostly guys who are going to be in double A or triple A or might not even play this year. And he's going to play. It's kind of like the Kevin Smith that I gave last year at 750 to one. I was like, he's on the roster. He was terrible, but like he's going to play. And uh, I don't even know if he finished at the top 15 in, in rookie of the year voting, but um, I don't think he did because he was not good. But Will Brennan is better than Kevin Smith. Oh, and yeah. those odds at 200 to one, I think are well worth it for the Guardians. I like yeah. that a lot. I didn't even I see love him. it. I didn't even there see him. Yeah, because he, he's way down there. Like he's, <laughs> he's in the trenches. He, he may not be an everyday guy, but he's like a majority of a platoon guy. Yeah. Maybe he goes off. Probably not, but 200 to one. Hey, I think he goes off. I'm a truther. All right. National League Rookie of the Year wrap. You've got a share of the odds on favorite at four to one Corbin Carroll and Jordan Walker, who just got added to the opening day roster. Then you got Miguel Vargas at plus 700, Kodai Sanga with the Mets at plus 800, and Ezekiel Tovar with the Rockies, who's going to be the opening day shortstop at plus 900. Those are all the guys that are shorter than 10 to one. I'll get mine out of the way quick. I think Carroll's awesome. Um, I, I like Carroll as a plus 400 bet way more than I like Jordan Walker at plus 400. So I go Carroll. I bet on Corbin Carroll at plus 500. Now he's down to plus 400. And I bet on him as soon as Jordan Walker got called up because Jordan Walker's odds went crazy and and Carroll's dropped for a little bit. And I was like, perfect. Give me Corbin Carroll. Best thing that could happen. He is the best thing that could happen. He is a better player than Jordan Walker. Like, I just want to get that clear. At least that's what I think so. It could prove to be totally false. But I go into the 2023 season, three season, 2023 season fully in the belief that Corbin Carroll is better from an all-around perspective than Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker is perceived as a better hitter. He put up a 128 WRC plus in double A, has never played in a triple A game, and is now playing in Major League Baseball. Corbin Carroll at double A, 165 WRC plus, 135 WRC plus in triple A, and then a 130 WRC plus in the big leagues. He's a much better defender. He's an elite corner outfielder. He's the fastest player in Major League Baseball, and he was on a seven war pace. I honestly think he's a dark horse MVP candidate. Like, it's just the problem is the Dimebacks probably won't make it there 
because he'd have to go so crazy that he would destroy everyone, which I don't think so. That's why he's not worthy of a bet. But in the rookie of the year voting, I mean, this guy could be competing with like Michael Harris in terms of war totals. Like, I think it has to be Corbin Carroll. That's actually my pick for National League Rookie of the Year. So, you know, this is the way I always boil it down. And and also Corbin has been my number one prospect in baseball now for this will be the second year in a row that that he, he, he is that number one guy. Corbin Carroll and Gunnar Henderson are big leaguers that we still rank as prospects. And that's why their odds are so ridiculous. And for Corbin's odds to now be at plus 400, no brainer. That's my number one pick. I'm going to give two long shots because Corbin was such a no brainer. Yeah. Go Hayden was Nesky at 40 to one. Great. This pick. guy's got a rotation spot on lock. Been talking about him a lot on the call up. The stuff is disgusting. He's throwing strikes. He gets ground balls. He gets swing and miss. He's going to be one of the few rookies that are in a rotation. And even if he struggles through the first few starts, he's keeping that rotation spot. They need him. Um, and 40 to one odds is ridiculous. You talk about like where that puts him, that puts him next to Kyle Harrison. That puts him next to Sixto Sanchez, who <laughs> was a joke last year when we were wow. talking about rookie of the year votes. I can't wait for Sixto's 2026 rookie season. Yeah. That's like the, awesome. <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and then my second long shot is Gavin stone at 150 to one. Yep. Gavin stone is ahead of Bobby Miller. Gavin yep. stone, I think is a better pitcher than Bobby Miller. And he is healthy when somebody needs to be called up because Ryan Pepe out is stinking or because Clayton Kershaw hopefully doesn't happen, but, but goes down or somebody goes down from that often injured rotation. I think stone is the first guy up. If they think he's ready, I think he's ready. He dominated through spring training and to put it in perspective, a guy that is right next to him is drew Jones. Drew Jones may not reach high A this year (laughs) and he has the same odds as Gavin stone. Yeah, but you know, somebody's going to bet on that. Someone is, but, and he's Andrew Jones' son. If you bet on, I'll house that. If, if if anyone wants to bet on that, text me. I'll give you five hundred to one odds. I'll give you five thousand to. Oh one no! Odds. Here comes Aro again. Like he's giving Dude, out crazy. There's no <laughs> scenario where that happens. But anyway, someone, you know what? Gavin You'll Stone. I think fastball changeup is already enough to, to to play in the big leagues. The breaking ball is good. The command is elite. This guy could be ready very very soon, and I think the Dodgers will call him up pretty quickly. Yeah, Arm stole my long shot. That was, I didn't steal it. It was just his pick for long shot. At, that was mine. But another one that I was considering, Thad Ward, first pick of the Rule 5 draft. He's 100 to 1. Um, again, that's why I like Gavin Stone, because I think Gavin Stone is a better pitcher than Thad Ward. But Thad Ward is probably going to get a decent amount of run. He's one of those young guys in the national system that's most big league ready. I expect him to end up winning a roster spot, maybe that fifth starter. Maybe he could turn in a good year. But Gavin Stone is my long shot, and Thad Ward is another one to consider at 100 to 1. Um, similar thinking to Aram with Wesneski. Jared Schuster has a spot. Um, Jared Schuster is 50 to 1. James Outman is on the Dodgers opening day roster, folks. He's 80 to 1. We know it. that that guy's a freakazoid. He hit for a cycle in his what MLB debut, right? Or one of them, yeah. Almost in? Did he, yeah. did he complete the cycle? I thought he completed the cycle. Might have been his second big league game. He might have hit for the cycle in his MLB debut. But like Outman is as freaky uh, a tool set as you will find. Is he going to swing and miss a good bit? Hell yeah, he is. But can he pump out 20 to 25? And can he steal 20 bags if he got a big enough sample? And like, I'm not saying that he's going to, but I am also saying that Trace Thompson and David Peralta are in the uh, opening day lineup for the Dodgers. So I have no idea if, if Outman performs, I don't think there's much stopping Dave Roberts from putting him in the lineup. I think I like he, David Peralta. Sort of. I, th- I think he cycled twice in one week in the minors <laughs> and then homered in his first at bat in the big leagues. If I'm not mistaken. Cycle guy. Outman's nuts. That's so <laughs> stupid. That's insane. Um, and, and I think Trace Thompson, I don't think it's his year. Like, I, I think that he caught lightning in a bottle, and I think there's going to be opportunity for for Outman out there. So I like that pick. Or Jason Hayward. Shout out Jason Hayward. Jay Hay. Shout out Jason Hayward. All right. This was fun, man. Uh, opening day preview tomorrow. Um, we'll save, Peter, the breath of the uh, of the plugs, but get your merch. Listen to all the podcasts, all the episodes, or all the, uh, all the links you need are in the show notes and the link tree. And with that, Peter. Thank you, everybody.